All right, Mr. Bellingham, good afternoon. Thanks for taking a few minutes to speak with me. I know that you've got plenty of things going on in general, but you have been involved in the Washington architectural restoration scene for years now. Yep, at least uh, Monarch has for the last 25 years, mm -hmm. so 25th anniversary coming up on uh, February the 23rd, mm -hmm. 2012. So Congratulations. And I've been in the city working on buildings for 39 years. And you're used to the noises that, uh, that we're hearing in the background. Yeah. So this is uh, part of your uh, environment, right? Yep, well, this, is, you know, this is where, where the work is done. This is the, the pit mm -hmm. face, as it were. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the cutting edge where everything's going on. Now, you're originally uh, from? I came to, came to America, uh, mm -hmm. being, being told by the person that the company trained me in London, I was going to Saudi Arabia, and I said, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> two of us came to America in 1973, mm -hmm. been here ever since. So One, it worked out well for you. Yeah. One of the best mistakes I've made. Yeah, but we don't have very good fish and chips here, so. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can find them. You can find them. Okay. Well, I want to thank you again for taking the time because this is such, you've got a lot of things going on as usual, but this church, the Epiphany Church, 13th and G Street Northwest, has got to be one of the most interesting renovation projects, I think. I mean, it's, it's an interesting church, actually, because when you look at the architecture, when you look, for the, when you look at the sign outside, and it's an Episcopalian, mm -hmm. which to me is Church of England, mm -hmm. when you come inside, it's a Baptist church. Uh, um, it's interesting. I've told people you can stand up on a high building and look around the city, and you can actually see the different types of church by the roofs. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to see. And they, you know, they, Obviously, if it was a, a typical English church, this wouldn't be stucco as this building. It mm -hmm. would be be stone, but a Baptist church would be stucco and, and brick. So it's interesting how you know that uh, has developed in the United States. Well, you studied it, and being from Europe, and I'm sure you've traveled to France and Germany and looked at some of the great cathedrals, mm. and you know something about a nave and and uh, the, the, the buttresses and yep. the great cathedrals and, yep. uh, and structural aspects of this. Yep. How does this compare to, to well, projects? Yeah, obviously, you've... it was a it was a an economy built church. Mm -hmm. I would say, obviously, the materials indicate mm -hmm. that. But you know, it's a beautiful church, um, and typically, and again denominational, you, they have certain characteristics. Mm -hmm. But again, if you go and look at St. John's Church in Lafayette Square, which we renovated about 18 months ago before President Obama was inaugurated, um, that there is a very economical church. Again, it's that it was obviously uh, a tight economy when they built these buildings. You know, the country was growing and people were here and big population, but obviously there wasn't a, a kind of an established base. So mm -hmm. that's what I think you see the difference between Europe and here on the churches, we're going to see different society, different you know time in, in the uh, development of the United States. Mm -hmm. so. But is this uh, being in Washington? I mean, the biggest church is obviously the Washington Cathedral, and then you could also say the Basilica at Catholic yeah. University. Uh, how do those compare to churches that you've seen in, in uh, say London? Well, obviously, you know the, the National Cathedral is a is a complete takeoff of a, a church in, in Great Britain. Um, it's a, a takeoff of the, York Minster, mm -hmm. if I remember rightly. Um, so it is, it's a very classical church. And it has the, you know, the materials you typically establish with a church, a lot of solid stone, limestone, and oak hammer beam roofs and everything else. Here you've got a, a building which is you know, very similar, beautiful stained glass windows, beautiful um, trusses and everything else. But it is, it is, as I say, in a style which I would say is a Baptist church. <laughs> Indeed, I, and, yeah. and I can appreciate that. This project has taken how long so far? Um, I think we started here um, beginning of the summer, mm -hmm. and uh, there have been some issues. Uh, we had a lot of uh, unforeseen plaster repairs, and it's very difficult for people to see the extent of the repairs. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, we had a little bit of an issue with the earthquake, a little bit of damage. Yeah, caused. we had an earthquake uh, here. So that, that was very unusual. Huh. But um, it's, it's, this part is going to be delivered about 20 to 25 days late. But there were reasons there were a lot more plaster repair and a lot of issues that came up. So, and again, you just can't see those from the ground. It's not you get up there and realize. And th this building suffered a tremendous amount of damage when the building to the uh, west was put up, I suppose, about 25 years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're using that. Well, sir. Can you leave for a sec? Yeah. Thanks. Thank um, you. So, when the, when the building was built next door, they underpinned it and obviously did a lot of damage. And if you look up, you can see these. These extra trusses have been put in, and the brackets up here. Yeah. And this is gone. And you can, when you get up very close, you can see the amount of damage that was done. Ah. Sadly. So that was something that was going, that you didn't necessarily anticipate, right? Well, no, we knew it was there, but mm -hmm. obviously, once you get up, you can see the amount of damage that was caused mm -hmm. when the people built the building next door, which is going to be 30 plus years ago. Yeah. So, 
And again, a building that is, is very fragile. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all right when it's, it's standing up or when somebody, you know, puts an unknown force to one side. The whole building starts to move and has dramatic effects. It's such a huge open space. Yeah, so. and if you can, you understand structures, I mean, sheer forces from the side can really yeah. disrupt the, the uh, integrity Literally. of the structure. And that's what they've had to do, they've had to tie it all back in. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting, these beams, I thought they were going to be solid, but when you get up, they're actually laminated. I thought they were cut <laughs> out of big trees, huh. which they would have been in Europe. It's strange. Well, I've never seen a laminated beam in the church of the day. That's going to affect your, I think, um, estimate in the long run, right? Uh, that, in this case, it's, it's really and truly, it's a, it's a, a redo of the finishes. Mm -hmm. No real heavy structural work in this portion of the work. This is a restoration of the finishes, restoration of the outside, and then obviously the other portions of the church, the back of house, as it were, where they've got the, the, um, the teaching rooms and the meeting rooms and everything else. That's where there's been a lot of additional work, where they're putting the elevator and everything else in there. But okay. um, it's a very active church, got a lot of activity. A lot of churches are, you know, dead during the week mm -hmm. and only active on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, well, yeah. this is really a community space. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Lots of things going on. Epiphany yeah. Church has really been known for outreach, and I mean, they have a homeless aspect, they have uh, a diverse clientele, and then there's this historic aspect of the physical church itself that you're worried about. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be finished this in how long, do you think? I think we actually finished, I think, the 6th of January. Okay, yeah. so right then, when football is really starting to crank up is when you... <laughs> yeah, the, the actual, I think the actual uh, rededication of the church is in November. The priests of the um, bishops are coming, I think, mm -hmm. I think 6th six, six November, I think, in that day, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. But again, it's, we enjoy working on buildings of this type. It's, you know, it's, it's wonderful to see you know, a building being restored. And obviously, it reminds me of a church in London called St. Martin's in the Field in Trafalgar Square, where they've got a very, you know, similar congregation. Mm -hmm. You know, a big city, a lot of people with issues and needs, and that church in London has the same um, benefits to the community as this one, basically. So. Okay, well, I know you got plenty to do today. For now, we're going to say goodbye, and then we'll okay. come back and look at this in a little bit more detail. Yeah, come back, and obviously, pews are going in next week, and then... If you come back in, you know, I would say around the 10th of October, I think it would be virtually finished and obviously getting ready for, for the rededication in November. So. Okay. Thank you for sharing. You're very welcome. And uh, we'll see you uh, uh, down the line. The next time you come through, we'll look at the pews and, and look at some detailing yeah. on the, on the walls and so okay. on. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Now, now, let me just tell you.